Hello, I'm Elaine, the Ninja Life Coach, and welcome to my channel today. Today, we're gonna to talk about what to expect the first year that you've lost your loved one. I know I did a video already on what to expect after your first year. Well, this one is what to expect during your first year because it can actually be a little different that first year than after the first year. Things kind of look a little differently after you've had some time to grieve and some time to adjust yourself to the process of being alone. But when you first lose your spouse, everything you do is brand new to you. Everything looks differently. It doesn't look the same. And I want to address some of those things. And these are just no in no particular order. I jotted them down on a, a notepad so that I could kind of keep my place here. But I just want to encourage you ladies that if you are in your first year of being without your spouse, things do get easier and they do get better. As long as you keep making an effort to stay with God and move forward a little bit, even if it's only driving a different way to work one day, just a little something out of your, out of your, the same thing, you can really take some steps toward the healing process. The first thing that I noticed after my husband passed away was I was exhausted. Greg was sick for 13 months and I was his, his main caregiver for those 13 months and he didn't sleep well at all. So during those 13 months, I got very little asleep at all. I slept maybe two hours at a time and then I was wide awake and then I might sleep 45 minutes and then I was wide awake. Well, after he passed away, right there at the gravesite, when they put him in the ground, I realized I was exhausted and in fact, almost collapsed there at the graveside because I was so tired. Now you would think that after I got home and got to, you know, got some rest, that that would be, you know, I would, you know, get some healing from that. But I didn't because it took a long time for me to be able to even sleep through the night. That exhaustion stayed with me for a while. And then as I was able to, you know, sleep for th two or three hours at a time and not be just awake every 30 minutes or awake every hour, I began to get a little bit more of my strength back and a little bit more of my strength back. And I was eventually able to overcome that exhaustion. And I think that's just something that most widows feel. Every widow that I've ever talked to, whether their spouse died suddenly or it was a prolonged, prolonged illness like what my husband had, they all say that they felt that exhaustion. So I want to just kind of warn you about that. If you, if you are going through that, that's something that's perfectly normal for you to feel. And it does get better. The next thing, and this is really not in any particular order, but the next thing that I want to just talk about is the numbness that you feel. You may notice that you are numb, that you have no feelings, that there's nothing that brings you joy, there's nothing that brings you happiness, that your feelings are just numb, that you don't really feel any love, any special love for your family. Some of that, that's just gone, just gone, it's like it's gone to sleep. Encouraging note here, that does come back. You will start feeling again, and I talk about that in my other video on this same topic about what happens after the first year. That does start to come back. So take courage, take heart. You will start to feel again, and when you do, it's a beautiful thing. But don't be surprised if you feel numb because it took me a while to get to where I really started feeling feelings again. And that's okay, that's part of the process. The next thing that I wanna talk about is you may feel anger. You may be angry at God. You may be angry at your late spouse. You may be angry at your family because normally during a funeral process and during the, the time when you go to pick out your caskets and, and decide you know, what, what it, what's the loved one gonna wear, what's the service gonna look like, all those things that you have to do at the darkest moment of your life, and I think all that's barbaric, but you have to do it. And those are times when tempers can flare because everybody has an opinion how everything should go. And you may find yourself getting really angry then. After the funeral, you may find yourself getting angry at God. You may find yourself getting angry at your late spouse because they left you. 
those feelings are perfectly normal. That's perfectly normal to feel that way. I was so angry at Greg that one day I was out there visiting his grave site and I literally stomped on his grave. I was so mad, but that's okay. God helped me work my way through that anger and led me into a peaceful relationship with, with God. And God has been more near to me now that I'm a widow than he ever was before I lost my husband. So those verses in the Bible's about, about in the Bible about widows and orphans, those verses are really true. But don't be surprised if you're angry at God as well, because after all, he's the one who's in control, right? He's the one who was supposed to heal your husband. He was the one who was supposed to heal your wife and he didn't. Well, they died. I prayed, but they died. You have all those feelings that you have to work your way through. But with God's help, you will. You will work your way through them and you will come to a resolution in your heart and you won't be angry anymore one day. If you take steps to move forward and make the decision that you are not going to let this define the rest of your life. You kind of have to come to that at some point during this process of, okay, I can become a bitter old woman. I decided I would, that if I kept up the way I was, I was going to become a bitter old woman like my grandmother was, and no one was going to want to be around me, including my grandkids. Well, you know, I couldn't have that. So I decided that I was going to overcome some of that anger that I felt. I didn't care what it took. So just be aware of that. That's something that you're probably going to experience. And if you do, there is a way out. The last thing that I wanna talk with you about, and this is really important because this happened to me multiple times, and this is something that will probably happen to you too if you lose your spouse, or if it's already happened to you, you know, you can drop a comment down in the, in the comment box. You can drop me an email or just let me know, hey, you know, this did happen to me. People will probably tell you how you need to grieve. There will be people that actually say to you, come right up to your face and say, well, I don't understand why you're still sad and it's been six weeks since you've lost your spouse. You need to get over that. You need to get out more. You need to do this. You need to do that. They mean well. They really do. And, you know, I don't know in the past before my husband died if I would have been smart enough to keep my mouth shut during those particular times. And people say these things because they normally don't know what to say. So they just say anything that, you know, will try, to, because they're trying to help. Now, some won't, some are just, you know, crazy and they'll just say anything that comes into their head. And some people will actually try to hurt you during this period of time if they have some type of, you know, abnormal psychology going on. But most people, they say it because they love you and they don't want to see you sad. It's our responsibility to let them know that being sad is part of this process. Of course, we're going to be sad. We have just lost our loved one. We're going to be sad. We're not going to feel like getting out. We're not going to feel good. We are going to not be ourselves. <laughs> On some level, I'm not, I'm not like I was before. And that's okay, I'm different. And that's okay, I'm better than I was. I worked on myself, I'm better. But that first year, it's a tough one because people may say those things to you and when they do, they mean well. But just keep in mind, you do you. You do what you feel like doing. If you don't feel like getting out, don't get out. If you don't feel like talking on the phone, don't talk on the phone. Just don't hole up and cut people off from you. Don't do that. That's not mentally healthy, nor is it good for you physically or spiritually. But you grieve in your process and in your time, and don't let anyone else tell you how to do it. I hope this helps you some today. I just wanted to drop this in my channel so that I could give you something to think about. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. God bless. Maranatha.